Okay, it's uh, 1050 uh, Pacific where we are uh, in Arizona. Uh, welcome everybody and uh, good morning to those here. I know there are people from uh, practically across the world participating today. It's very exciting to see. We saw a lot of uh, presentations already in these day and a half. I hope you got a replay of uh, Vitalik's uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> interview with uh, Brian. It was also fantastic. So uh, let me jump on to what we are going to talk about today, which is uh, the use of verifiable credential technology with uh, our loyalty application. So in previous um, iterations of this, we had presented a year or two ago about the use of Hyperledger Fabric to build a consortium loyalty product. That was our first foray into uh, using Fabric. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit about our history and uh, you know quickly where this product came about. And then we will layer in the second uh, problem to solve, which is uh, how do you securely store customer PII data? Use it, but at the same time, don't fall into all the pitfalls of existing systems. You know, pretty much the biggest companies in the world have not been able to secure their customer information. We have seen that time and again. And maybe there's a new way to think about it using verifiable credentials. So that's what we will talk about today. And I have a quick two or three minute demo which kind of illustrates the concept. Uh, I'll go through some slides and then hopefully the last 10, 15 minutes we can spend uh, doing a interactive Q&A. So please do post in the Q&A section or the chat, uh, and then uh, happy to answer as many questions as possible. So uh, who are we? You know, uh, Pravici, uh, which is a uh, company that uh, we founded in uh, 2013. Our main focus was CRM and loyalty. And just very quickly on our history, we had worked a lot with loyalty applications with large airlines and so on and so forth. And the thing that we learned uh, from our experience uh, consulting with uh, these uh, companies and enterprises is that a loyalty program can be very profitable uh, under certain situations if it's a consortium loyalty. Uh, airlines are the best example that you can think of. But one problem that happens is these loyalty programs make a lot of money selling a ton of points to partner ecosystems, credit card companies, car rental companies, and so on. But the problem is one of reconciliation. There's a lot of point-to-point -point integrations that we have done personally as part of our consulting assignments. And then um, reconciling becomes a lot more difficult. With the onset of blockchain technology, we thought that one way in which we can mitigate a lot of those types of problems is to use uh, distributed ledgers. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, we were at that time working with a big automotive OEM, uh, trying to help them stand up uh, a loyalty program. And then we proposed this idea and it was well received. We did an Ethereum uh, POC uh, just to kind of see how this concept will work. And then uh, again, uh, we have talked about this in other sessions here, uh, even today. Uh, we switched to fabric because of its enterprise friendly nature, the cost, gas cost, and things of that nature, right? Uh, which uh, were barriers at that time when we were looking at this. Uh, so we chose fabric and it was a great choice. And we delivered a pilot for this particular customer. So our product has grown out of that. And uh, so basically our core product, loyalty product was, is if you have a consortium, and you have some large partners, some small partners, the large partners will some, run some nodes, which will help us reconcile, get invoices quickly reconciled. As a matter of fact, Professor Mary talked about uh, the invoice reconciliation problem with uh, Walmart uh, today morning. And uh, similar situation arises when you have a large set of partners trying to resolve the point balances that, e that they owe each other. So, so that's the core product. But today we are going to focus on another aspect. We also uh, got the opportunity to be part of Hyperledger, uh, talk to companies like Abernim, who are uh, pioneers in the area of fabric, and uh, sorry, in Aries and Indy. And then we said, why not take these additional concepts and apply it 
to the, the area of loyalty. So as you know, one of the biggest problems that I just talk, touched upon that is the fact that um, customer data today gets stored in central CRM databases. We have been working with CRM for the last 20 years and this is a constant issue, right? How do you securely keep that customer data prevented from getting hacked? So in the context of building our loyalty application, we thought, why not do this, right? Uh, when a customer signs up for a loyalty program, you collect some information about them because you want to serve them better. You want to know their address, their email address, their zip code maybe, and a few other demographic information, the month they were born in so that you can give them a, a good deal that particular month and so on and so forth. That's a typical loyalty system, right? Uh, but instead of storing that data and have the potential of losing it and being subject to all sorts of fines and uh, not to mention the dissatisfaction of the customer, why not store it as a verifiable credential in a mobile app? Typically, loyalty programs carry a mobile app. So why not store it there and then seek the permission of the customer if you ever need to uh, you know, get one of those attributes for you to use. And this way, even when you seek the permission and use that attribute, you are going to use it ephemerally and you are not storing anything, definitely not storing it to the blockchain or for that matter, anywhere else besides the secure location, uh, probably, you know, secure through a fingerprint at uh, the uh, customer's uh, loyalty mobile app. So that is the core idea of uh, what we built in here. So I'll just uh, talk a few more things, uh, just our relationship. So I talked about our core loyalty program, um, you know, and that, uh, you know, as to why we used Hyperledger Fabric for that. And then uh, I'm just going to, for those, uh, most of you in this audience uh, probably already are uh, clear about how verifiable credentials work, but not everybody uh, might uh, know that. So I'm going to spend a few minutes just talking about uh, the, you know, the concepts of uh, verifiable credential. So what is a verifiable credential? It's a W3C standard uh, that you may all be aware. And uh, verifiable credentials have been incubated in Hyperledger Indian Aries under, uh, you know, the, the umbrella of Hyperledger. And the concepts are pretty straightforward. You have an issuer who has a, you know, uses typical public private key cryptography and digital signatures. And what the issuer does is whatever information, you know, you have a set of attributes. This could be a, a vaccination certificate. It could be in our particular use case that we are talking about. This is the set of PII data about yourself. In either case, what you do is an issuer issues this certificate by signing this with their private key and then publishing their public key in a data registry. That's uh, typically the only role of blockchain in here. This is Hyperledger Indy, for example, other uh, can be any other data registry. Ideally, it's a blockchain because then it uh, basically functions as a distributed key management system. Some metadata such as the formats and so on could also be stored here in this data registry. But the key issue is the PII data, medical information, whatever the, is the subject of this particular certificate is securely held in a wallet that is held by the customer. In our case, this is a loyalty member and they are holding their own data. So we literally take their inputs. We don't store it anywhere. We simply reissue it as a credential which is stored in their wallet. Now comes the concept of a verifier. If a verifier wants to check some attribute that is useful, in our case, in loyalty, uh, the attributes will be, like I said, your month of birth, your email address, your physical address, uh, in case of some cases, uh, zip code, whatever the case may be. Um, the verifier can ask for a set of attributes or it can even be even more sophisticated. We'll have an example of that uh, in, uh, in the video that I'm going to show you. So a presentation, a verifiable presentation is made by the holder to the verifier. Now, all that the verifier need to know is who's, the, who's signed this public key 
And uh, if they're able to verify that in a blockchain, then that's great. In our use case, that doesn't even apply since we are the ones issuing it and we are verifying it as and when needed. Um, so basically, they can check the public key. They can check this digital signature, which says, yes, this was signed by the private key behind this public key. It's not being tampered with. And then they can get attributes or there is concepts such as selective dis disclosure and zero knowledge proofs. For example, uh, if you just needed to prove that you are above 21, you don't need to reveal your date of birth. You can just reveal the fact that you are above 21. So that's one ZKP application. Uh, there could be others, uh, for example, in the vaccine case, like I said, you know, you could prove that you took a vaccine uh, within the last uh, three months and so on and so forth. So this is the three parties, the issuer, holder, and verifier that are involved in verifiable credentials. And uh, that is the kind of concept that we have applied in the context of loyalty. So basically, like I said before, what we end up doing is we extend the use of verifiable credentials to store the loyalty member PII data and again, why store this data somewhere else and increase the risk? You can now give the best of both worlds using this technology. Now, typically when you sign up for a loyalty program, you want to be rewarded for the actions that you take, the activities that you do with the consortium of loyalty companies. So you are willing to share your activities with them so that you can earn points. So it's a little bit different than some other verifiable credential use cases in which uh, you know, they even try to avoid this correlation, right? Uh, but in this case, you're giving them permission to be in, in turn to be rewarded with points. But there is no uh, need for that company to know all your details and store it in their systems. You, know, you hold it, you reveal whatever it is that you needed to reveal for, for which you are comfortable with, right? And if you're not comfortable giving your zip code, you can just say no, and they can give you offers which are generic, right? So I think this is a new way of thinking for companies, right? Uh, it might be a little bit shocking for to try and do business this way, as opposed to how it's been traditionally done. If you think about all the CRM systems that I've worked in, the main thrust has been how much extra information can we collect about somebody. They want to track you every which way and the belief was that collecting all that information they'll be able to target you better right but i think we have seen the pitfalls of that type of stuff secondly it's i think the era has come that if somebody wants to use your information first of all they need to seek your permission and second they need to split the proceeds of the benefits of that with you you know for example pay you with loyalty points they can tell Hey, if you give us, if you put your zip code in your credential, we are not going to just keep it in a database, but even just adding that will give you some points for that. Because once in a while we might seek your permission and use that particular piece of data, right? So that's kind of where um, uh, we want to support the concept of true data privacy by putting this personal information into a mobile wallet and then letting the user keep control of that, right? So that is the large uh, uh, kind of uh, theory in how we built this. Uh, so let me see, before I do a demo, let me see if there are some questions uh, uh, that are that are visible. Oh, uh, sorry, I didn't check that you wanted it in presentation mode. Uh, I will try and do that. Uh, in just a second. Uh, aren't we a centralized system conceptually? Uh, centralized in the sense of uh, like all permissioned uh, systems, right? Our fabric network is run by a set of coalition partners or a set of companies. So it is, so uh, are there trusted third parties in this concept? Yes. The, there are, you know, all the, you know, this is no different than any other permission network. As far as um, the uh, concepts of uh, verifiable credentials, as you know, I mean, the whole thing is the credential is held in the 
uh, wallet of the customer. And therefore, we are really not centralizing the storage of that information. We have a reference to the customer, typically a member ID. So what happens if a customer needs to uh, follow the GDPR concept of, hey, forget me from the system. He deletes this mobile app. Uh, we have lost the cryptographic uh, verification. As a matter of fact, the way a person even logs into the, into the loyalty application through the mobile app is using a verifiable credential. The credential that was issued to you with uh, Didcom Exchange, you are able to prove that whoever you know, you have, you hold this credential. There is a credential ID or a member ID in there, and you can prove that you know whoever is holding this phone is is, uh, is having that, right? So we don't need to know any further information when that reference goes away and that person deletes it. We only have left with us a member ID, which is not really attached to. We don't know who because the the, the member ID is attached to a certificate, um, you know, or a digital certificate which uh, the person has decided to get rid of and therefore we pretty much disappear that data. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, reshare my screen so that you can actually see the uh, quick demo of how this is put together. So let me Hopefully you can see my screen now, and I'm going to play this. Comes to building a fluid user experience, a lot of data is involved, and storing lots of personal customer information equals a lot of liability. As a business, how can you manage empowering customers to own their data while not losing the conveniences of storing information in a dedicated database? Pravici TLP utilizes self-sovereign identities and verifiable credentials to solve this problem. Here's an example. A customer, Kevin, has just downloaded a loyalty program app and is ready to register. Though this may look like your typical registration process, in the background, a digital credential with this information is stored in Kevin's personal mobile wallet. Kevin's information is securely stored on his personal device, not in a database. Now to log in, Kevin selects login with verifiable credentials. With this feature, Kevin does not need to memorize a username or password. The loyalty app instead requests to check he is carrying the appropriate account credential. He simply scans his fingerprint to authorize the app access and is redirected to the loyalty app home page. Kevin wants to order a beer flight from his favorite brewery. When he's ready to redeem, the app asks permission to confirm he is of legal drinking age. With a quick scan of his fingerprint, the app checks Kevin is above 21 and approves the redemption request. In this way, digital credentials allow Kevin to take control over his information while maintaining the flow of a smooth customer experience. Learn more at pravici.com. All right. So uh, that is the presentation, uh, you know, which kind of illustrates the concepts that we just uh, talked about. And uh, it shows how you can construct a loyalty application. Now, of course, uh, there are some questions um, that you might have. Uh, for example, you know, how did it check the age? It's a self-declared date of birth that you do when you sign up to a loyalty program. Uh, we just, you know, many of them want to make sure that you are at least about 21. But you also realize with verifiable credentials that you can hold multiple credentials. People are talking about doing uh, even driver's licenses in a digital wallet. Um, what that happens, uh, when that happens, when you have multiple credentials in a wallet, it's possible to do what's called a composite presentation, right? For example, you can present your proof that you're about 21 from your driver's license and from your personal information, digital credential, you can pull some other data. So these possibilities are certainly there. So let us see. And I think Trevor, uh, you said, are you thinking that because the same entity uh, is both the issuer and verifier? Yeah, in this particular case, uh, you know, 
we just want to use the verifiable credential concept so that we don't hold that information, right? In a typical system, the issuers are different than verifiers. In our case, we are using it in a slightly different way. Thank you, Jim. Uh, let us see if there are questions on this one, you know. Is the loyalty application and the wallet application the same application or are they two different apps? They are two different apps. The, the wallet application is the mobile piece, which talks to, uh, think about it as talking to an API layer, which is the rest of the loyalty application um, in, in, in itself. So the way we architect is, of course, we have Hyperledger fabric in the back. On top of it is our you know, chain code and then the API layer. And on top of the API layer, we have an administrative console for administrative purposes. We have a mobile app which can talk to it. So there is a separation of concerns between the, the API layer, so to speak, and uh, the mobile app. The mobile app is a wallet. So that's an interesting question, uh, which is, um, you know, this, uh, this, this whole paradigm of using wallets uh, is going to get stronger and stronger. Um, and uh, what happens is um, as time goes by, people would want to have both the, <clears throat> uh, the ability to store verifiable credentials, uh, it could be stored cryptocurrencies and so on and so forth. So the wallet usage needs to get uh, way better, right? And I think over time it will evolve. Uh, because today wallets can be a little cumbersome how to restore them you know if you lose stuff and so on and so forth so i think that's uh, an area of research that is very strong i saw some great uh, new advances using things like uh, threshold signatures which will make the application of wallets much easier uh, without changing traditional customer onboarding process in uh, lending world Akshay, uh, could we integrate this in a traditional lender customer? You could, uh, again, depending on, I think in the loyalty use case, um, the bottom line is, uh, you know, that information we feel, you know, is secure enough in their, uh, in their wallets. Like I said, the wallet process needs to get a lot more stronger because in a lending world, there may be multiple occasions for them to uh, get your information, right? So it becomes really difficult um, if um, you know you have to have the person online to authorize every interaction. I think the world is going to move to a better place, Akshay, where there may be ability to have secure uh, cloud-based wallets, uh, agents which you can deputize that can work with those wallets. And like I said, with concepts like threshold signatures where you have multiple parties will have to, uh, will have to agree instead of this single private key being the problem, right? You lose the private key, you lose everything type of a situation. When those improve, I think uh, all those applications can come to fore. Any other questions uh, that you'd like to post in the Q&A chat? All right, if nothing else, then we will close uh, a little early, give you guys uh, some, some of your time back. Uh, enjoy the rest of uh, the presentations. Uh, again, I'll post here in chat where you can uh, reach me if you have uh, further questions. Uh, I'll be happy to be in touch or hit me up in LinkedIn and uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you, folks. I missed some questions. Uh, Bogdan, can you uh, can you point me? Uh, let's see. In the Q and A section, okay. <laughs> Ah, okay.
uh okay sorry is the lord okay there is this according to your experience are companies interested in allowing customers to exchange tokens um blockchain could be useful for this person according yeah the concept of uh, exchanging tokens for you know some other tokens that is uh, uh multiple point types as a matter of fact we have designed that within our application and there is uh, interest we are pursuing some uh, opportunities lies right now in asia where uh, they not only want a coalition loyalty program but they also want to be able to exchange points with other popular programs like for example grab is a very uh, you know popular uh, you know uber like network and they have their own loyalty program and there are consortium of companies which want to have their own loyalty uh, uh, points but be able to exchange it so that is coming uh, for sure but in loyalty so far the concepts of tokens is a little bit different than you know an ico or regular crypto token right tokens are covered basically what happens is when a company issues tokens uh, they defer the revenue right they defer the revenue for that amount so let's say they give you a dollar worth of uh, points for 10 dollars worth of purchase that you made basically they defer that one dollar of revenue until you redeem the points so all points are actually backed by the deferred revenue of that company there's a concept of breakage and so on and so forth by which it's reconciled so the the accounting behind it is a little bit different but uh, there could be a, a way in which uh, you know crypto tokens can also be acting as loyalty points i think that age is coming which wallet app are you using and where can i find the aps to connect my app to it the wallet app that we are is uh, custom built right it's just part of our as a matter of fact for verifiable credentials uh, we use uh, evernim as the you know evernim agents and the evernim sdk and so we pretty much use the if you if you are familiar with connect.me that will be the app that uh, you know that we kind of model ours uh, on uh, so that's what we are using right now. Again, wallets are going to be standardized at some point, I think, uh, which I believe uh, will happen sooner than later. Uh, are you running on a pre-existing network? Uh, so these are, uh, you know, individual networks that we are, we are standing up for customers based on their requirement. You know, a consortium of companies get together. Uh, we stand up uh, Fabric. We can do it in AWS, Oracle Cloud, you know, pretty much anywhere that the customer wants. Uh, in uh, our pilot, we actually did it uh, through a private network that uh, the automotive OEM wanted. Okay, I think that answers uh, all the questions. Jim, is that the presentation mode? <laughs> Sorry, I, I was trying to figure out how to do that. All right, if there are no other, uh, yeah, okay, there is one more from Paul. Um, how did you accomplish such a smooth integration between wallet and loyalty app? Um, basically, uh, like I said, you know, uh, because we kind of know both sides, right? Um, so we know the communication back and forth. But the the most important thing to really understand is, uh, you know, we kind of know what is in the credential simply because we defined it. But uh, could we use uh, just any public wallet that somebody else writes? Uh, it can be done. The only problem is, uh, like you said, the integration between the loyalty application pieces and what needs to be retrieved from the wallet could be, uh, you know, a little, it's it just smoothed by the fact that it is in a single application. That's all. That's why we prefer to use the, like I said, the Avernum SDK and then kind of uh, stick it with our, uh, you know, our loyalty app.
Okay, folks, I think we are, our time is up. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your attention. Like I said, uh, please uh, feel free to contact me and uh, we will see you somewhere else, I'm sure, in another presentation. Enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks.